Hi, I'm Emmy with Ebb and Flow Creative Co. And today we're gonna to be drawing or painting roses with watercolors. And this is a thing that I've struggled with for a while. Um, I've just had a hard time getting it right. It seems so easy when you watch it on YouTube or Skillshare or other classes. And it seems like their brushes just work in a way that mine doesn't. But I finally think I figured it out and I'm going to show you what I've learned today. So keep watching to see how to paint roses. Um, I'm sure in six months or so, my style will have completely changed. And that's the cool thing about learning art is like, you're always learning and improving. And so in six months, it might be completely different, but this is how I'm doing it right now. And so the problem most people get make is they either start with a circle, a solid circle, which, you know, limits them, or they start by, you know, just a series of concentric circles, you know, which is, it's fine, but there's a better way to do it. The first problem is the brush. And it's a standard watercolor brush and it's great for so many things, but not really for painting roses. Um, it has a pretty good snapback and the belly of it isn't very round. So it doesn't hold very much paint. And that is the biggest downfall for this brush. So just by swapping brushes, you will instantly improve. Okay, this is a Princeton Neptune in a size 10. It is much fatter and holds so much water. It, uh, it's a synthetic squirrel, I believe, but um, it's a very nice brush and it's not very expensive. I think I might've paid 10 or $12 for it, which it feels like a lot when you're first starting, but this brush is so versatile. It's not the best that's out there, but it's it's pretty good. All right, so the first thing is notice how much water it holds. It is pretty impressive. But it, it can also get these little bitty lines too. Let me mix some more color in so it's brighter. I'm using this pal porcelain palette today to mix my colors in so I can have a lot more liquid. That's another problem with painting roses, I find, is that normal palettes like this, they don't really give you that much room for like holding large amounts of color with mixed with water. So I ended up buying this little porcelain one and I really, really like it so far. It's really pretty. All right, so, to make a rose, we're going to start and make, make just a few little center parts. And I usually do about three, I vary them in size, make them kind of wonky and not straight lines. And then we're going to make it darker at the center and we're going to kind of draw, use our brush to draw kind of a little curve like a C shape. All right. And then we want another one and we're going to make it kind of wobbly on the outside. The more wobbly, the better. And so from there, let me mix some more water in so it's a little lighter. We're going to fill that little white space right there between them and kind of go out see how it's kind of a W and then we're going to fill it and make a petal shape, but we don't want it that perfect. We want it kind of wonky. I should have left myself more room. And so then we're going to do it again and kind of fill that white space with kind of wonky shapes of petals. You can add more water to make it a lighter color as you go and more. And you don't want the same amount every time. Like you can do one right here. That's completely different. 
and see it's already a prettier rose and so maybe I haven't grasped the complete way to do it correctly while using the brush but this is how I'm doing it for now I'm pretty much drawing with my brush and I feel like that is an okay place to start and it's given me the results I want so I'm really happy with it and so just because somebody says that it has to be done a certain way doesn't mean that it can't be done differently um, this is a I feel like this is a great place to start but if you have too much white spot space you can go in add a little more paint wherever you need just really like leave leave a lot of white space in between the petals it's okay if they connect and kind of bleed together I think that looks really cool um, and so to do a bud you would just use your brush pretty much and do like two little um, brush shapes together you know so the brush makes a let me get more color on there so the brush makes a kind of a leaf shape almost and you can make it fatter and then add another one just to kind of you can add a little more give it some more petals and it's a little more organic than just you know circles circles and lines they so don't want to do that there are instances when that looks cool, like with gouache, but when you're doing like a really flat design, it can look really cool. But for a loose watercolor, you do want it to be uh, a little more organic. And so I'll show it one more time. You do these little, little center parts for those very tight little roses in the middle. And then you can do one or two little petals around it. And kind of try to fill in these little spots right here with petals. And just kind of give it a jaggedy little edge. work too close to this again I'm just kind of playing today so it doesn't really matter and you can just keep going you can make really big beautiful roses though and so if you want you can also take a little bit of another color and drop it in and that looks really cool I usually like to do like a Naples yellow and then drop in some opera pink or um, I just bought this uh, quinacridone coral and that is really pretty with the Naples yellow. It makes like a peachy color. So pretty. And so yeah, I do really enjoy combining the colors. And so to make leaves, up some green to make leaves you can do you know just use your brush to make kind of a leaf shape or you can kind of do the same thing for roses but then you use that tip to make the little jagged edges And then you let it dry and you can add a line on top or leave as many lines as you want. You can go back in when these are dry and add little leaves. And sometimes I like adding them ahead of time so that it does blend together because I think it looks really cool like that when they've blended. All right. so. This isn't completely dead. You can go in and fix it and it provides like a nice, as long as, as, 
as long as it's really light colored under it, you can go in and fix it. Just, it's just gonna be, give it a little pink undertone. And you're gonna have to go outside the edges. And make sure that the mix you're using is darker to kind of cover. And so I feel like this method is a little easier than a lot of what I've seen being taught, especially when you're new to watercolor and you don't quite have complete control of the brush yet. And uh, you can't quite make it do the things that you're seeing. I think this like drawing with the tip just, it's a little easier. And you can add in yellow to this or whatever color you want. So leave me a comment if this has helped and let me know your favorite uh, flower to paint. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and, and leave a comment. Thanks.